Okay, I guess we'll get started. Thanks for attending. My name is Bill Mason, and I'm uh, Director of Partner Strategy for Virtualization and OpenStack at Red Hat. And I'm doing a joint presentation today on uh, Dell and Red Hat Cloud Solutions we've been collaborating on. And I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Joseph George, who's responsible for uh, cloud and big data solutions at Dell. So um, this is the requisite movie, steal a movie slide for your OpenStack presentation. The reason I call it Back to the Future, uh, seriously, though, is um, Red Hat's been working with Dell for 15 years. Dell was the first OEM to pre-install um, Red Hat Linux on servers and workstations and kind of anticipated this enterprise Linux market where we now find ourselves with lots of uh, Unix to Linux migration. And in 2002 and 2003, Dell was one of the first to pre-install the Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, 3 release. And now we're collaborating on OpenStack. And the reason that... Um, the reason the partnership works really well for us, Dell's been doing OpenStack. As I said, they kind of anticipated what was going to happen with Linux in the enterprise and helped Red Hat be very successful there. Uh, they've been involved with OpenStack since the very beginning, since uh, 2010. Red Hat is a little bit more of a late entry into the market, although we're a leading contributor over the last couple, three releases. So um, their domain expertise, working with many, many, many enterprise customers around private cloud deployments, and our expertise in making enterprise grade productizing uh, open source technologies with a subscription services uh, approach that makes customers really happy because it's an open non-vendor lock-in solution is really an ideal combination of our partnership. So, um, and, and our approach and philosophy for open source is also the same. We make everything open source as soon as we can. We have had some acquisitions of companies like uh, Manage IQ, our CloudForms product that takes a little bit of time to get through legal, but it's Red Hat's intention to publish all of its source code for all of its products. Uh, in all cases, and that's not necessarily what you get with some of the other uh, competing OpenStack distributions. They tend to add proprietary extensions, and that's just not, if you heard Sam Greenblatt's <clears throat> from Dell's keynote uh, two days ago, uh, or yesterday, um, you would know that that's just not the approach that Red Hat and Dell are gonna take. We're gonna make sure everything's open and everybody gets access to everything in the same way we do with our enterprise Linux and our JBoss middleware product lines. Um, so what we announced two week, three weeks ago, two weeks ago at Red Hat Summit, it's fun having back-to-back -back summits, it kind of wears you out, um, where it's that we're now open for business and that these joint solutions are available from Dell. And it's a collaboration not only on co-engineering, which I'll talk about in a future slide, but it's also collaborating around technical su support, around professional services, providing high-touch engagements to end customers <clears throat> so they can have initial success with OpenStack and understand how all the moving parts fit together. And it's a goal of this partnership, these cloud solutions, to build more, thank you, to build, uh, to kind of get to the mainstream enterprise. I think I called it yesterday, uh, OpenStack for mere mortals, so that um, more customers can gain benefit from the technology platform that OpenStack has created and generated and get significantly greater utilization out of all their compute storage and networking resources. Um, Joseph will talk about the solutions. They're, they're predefined building blocks. Uh, and then we have a professional services person go out and install the software because what we're finding is that there's a lot of different use cases, uh, certainly dev test use case and content delivery. Joseph will talk more about those, but um, uh, you know, the building blocks are pre-designed and pre-configured so that it takes the guesswork out of, uh, of the solution for the customers. And this is a global initiative. We're, we're gonna operate in all the geographies in which Dell and, and Red Hat um, collaborate globally. Focus. Um, as I mentioned, Red Hat's been a top contributor to the last three, the Grizzly, Havana, and Ice House releases. We give everything back to the community. We make sure that all our bug fixes, security errata, anything that we work on goes is contributed back to the OpenStack community, just like we do with Linux. And the goal of our partnership, as I said, is to try and get to more mainstream enterprise customers who maybe don't have the technical wherewithal that some of the uh, new technology giants have when they're deploying their own private clouds, they have their own resources in-house and they can manage and maintain things. Contrary to popular belief, clouds don't just like stay up running all day long. They fall down all the time. Amazon's falls down all the time. And so there's people that are knowledgeable about how to deal with uh, elegant failover techniques and how to bring things back up and running and keep your applications rolling. So um, the reason for the bridge analogy is this is a two-way street. As we collaborate with enterprise customers and gather requirements from those customers, we're gonna bring that feedback back to summits like this and have our engineers sit down in the blueprints and the design sessions and say, well, yeah, I talked to this customer in this vertical market and I talked to this customer in, in the, that has this kind of use case. And so um, we're really 
excited about the collaboration and what it's going to be able to bring not only to us as partners and as, as you know, business entities, but more importantly, the feedback we're going to be able to provide back to the OpenStack community of real world use cases across a wide range of uh, uh, enterprise customer types. So this is some of the areas where we're beginning to collaborate, uh, storage for Cinder and Swift, and uh, if you were here before you saw the Ceph session, although that's not a specific OpenStack project, but it's something that uh, Dell and Red Hat are increasingly involved in now as a re result of recent announcements. Certainly making OpenStack more manageable and easier to provision and deploy through Triple O and Foreman. When you see the uh, Foreman capability in Red Hat's Enterprise Linux OpenStack Platform 5, which will come out late June, early July, that's the commercial subscription version that we make available after doing quality engineering and bug fixing. Um, you'll see how much easier we've made it to install and provision the initial cloud resources across compute storage and networking. Um, certainly collaborating on networking, Dell has a strong networking product line. You'll learn more about that from Joseph in a minute about what's included in these uh, uh, solution building blocks. And then also uh, OpenStack telemetry and orchestration with Solometer and Heap. Customer expectations, I'll let you guys read this slide and I'm sure the slides will be made available. Um, the kind of customers that Red Hat's seen success with initially with OpenStack start with financial services where Red Hat Enterprise Linux was kind of born. Um, financial services companies wanting to see the benefits of commoditization across storage and networking as they've seen with uh, x86 server hardware. Um, telecommunications companies that wanna have uh, elastic and scalable infrastructure, not only for um, mobile application and rapid application development, but for uh, being able to deliver net new services to the end customers that they serve. And that's kind of for, for uh, uh, Dell already has a very, very, very big business in the telecommunications, and, and we've got some good enterprise Linux uh, exposure with telecommunications companies. But this initiative allows us to go even deeper and get to a point where we're actually touching the, the mobile users of, the, of those telecommunications companies with Red Hat technology. Um, in the retail uh, vertical market segment, we've seen some success with uh, e-tailers that want to have elastic and scalable compute infrastructure just like Amazon.com has, and OpenStack brings some of that functionality. Public sector companies that are um, increasingly predisposed to non-lock-in free um, open source licensed solutions because it's kind of a civic responsibility. And then uh, educational institutions doing high performance computing and big data analysis of really complex projects are places where we've seen success. And as I mentioned, um, a, you know, a real big part of this partnership isn't for us to just go out and sell stuff to customers, it's to get those requirements and feedback and drive it back into the OpenStack community development process. And with that, I will pass it to my colleague, Joseph. Thank you, Bill. It's good afternoon, everybody. Uh, once again, my name is Joseph George. I work for Dell and the uh, emerging solutions business. So things like OpenStack, things like Hadoop, Things like Ceph, things like NoSQL technologies fall into our group and we really have a charter to go out to the enterprise, the mainstream markets and figure out how we take these new emerging leading edge technologies and figure out how we bring it to our broad customer base. Uh, before I go too far, let me kind of see a show of hands here. Um, and one of the questions will not be, are you awake? I will not ask that question. Um, first question will be, uh, how many in this room are developers for OpenStack, for the OpenStack community? How many developers do we have in here? Okay, just one. How many, how many folks do here are operators or on the operator end of, cloud, of, of the cloud environment? Okay, we've got a few. Um, how many are looking at building an OpenStack cloud for their own business? Okay, we've got a few more there. Okay, so there's, there's, this is about the right mix. Usually I see a little bit more developers uh, in this type of an audience. Uh, but let me start out by saying one of the reasons we got into this space, you know, and this is like, uh, like Bill had said, this was a day one thing for Dell. 2010, July 19th, when the press release came out from Rackspace, we were full in on that day. So if you actually were to go back and, and look at the press release and on July 19th from Rackspace, you'll actually see Dell mentioned as a partner and a quote from Dell, our GM of our server division, fully endorsing this. And this went all the way up to the top at our company of getting in on day one. And the reason is that, that we actually came from a, a, a group uh, within Dell called the DCS team, the Dell Data Center Solutions team. And that team was tasked with building out some of the biggest clouds in the world. So we had a real sneak peek into how these distributed scale out environments were to run. And we know how cloud environments run, heavy automation, a lot of open source, configuration management tools, distributed architectures, a lot of things that our, our mainstream customers just don't see. So what we went in with is to try and figure out how we take this cool new emerging way of doing computing, 
which we believe everybody will do one day, how do we take that to the enterprise? And that is important for our community. I want to just highlight that for a second. For the OpenStack community, I, I myself have been a part of the community since day one. Um, I'm fort I've been fortunate to be on the board. I've been, you know, my team's helped spearhead the uh, meetups in Austin as well as in Boston. Uh, we take the OpenStack community and the effort very, very, very seriously, as do our partners at Red Hat, which is why this partnership's really important. To drive this into the enterprise is what will bring more validity to what we as a community are doing, okay? Over the years, as competitors, traditional competitors of ours got into this business, a lot of folks, especially the press, would like to come and say, hey, I'd like to get your take on, you know, so-and-so joining the community. Uh, you know, they're a competitor of yours. What do you think about this? My answer has always been that's fantastic because it's driving the community forward. Getting more people, more communities, more vendors in provides credibility to this. So my point here is that adoption by the enterprise of what we are doing, of what this distributed open source cloud is, adoption by the enterprise is critical so that we can continue to get the investments that we need into the project. We can continue to, to invent uh, as a community. We need that enterprise adoption. And that's why this is so important to me. It's why it's so important to Dell. It's why uh, it's so important to Red Hat and why we partner together. We are trying to take what our community is developing us being participants as well in that community, and, and Bill talked about some of the projects we're working on together. We want to build with you, but we also want to be those flag bearers to the enterprise. We, Dell has lived there for a long time. Red Hat's done, lived there for a long time, specifically in the open source portions of it. We want to be those flag bearers to the enterprise, and that's really what we're going to be talking about today. So as, a, um, as an interest person yourself, or as an influencer to others around you, that's really what's going to be important to walk away with from today. Um, so let's talk about a few things that come with the, and we, it's the Dell Red Hat cloud solution um, powered by Red Hat um, o OpenStack is the actual solution. It is a packaged solution that if you talk to your Dell rep, they are going to know exactly what it is that you're talking about. And our goal here was to provide a very simple, easy to use, fully supported hardware software services solution for anybody to be able to pick up OpenStack and implement it using open source community components. That's what we are here to do. And that's, so with that in mind, there's a few things that we made sure that we were addressing. So number one was really certified end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, if you go back to what I said before about how these big cloud environments are running things and how traditional IT runs, if I look at traditional IT, I see a lot of the administrators that are there certified by pick your favorite vendor um, that are trained, that are given documentation, that are given certifications that are given uh, hands-on labs, so make sure that they know how to run and operate this. In general, that sort of packaging hasn't really existed in the OpenStack community, and that's something that Dell and Red Hat are partnering on to make sure that there's a full, certified, validated solution that we can hand to a customer who may be new, completely new to this. They don't see, uh, they don't have Python developers on staff, right? They don't have uh, regular contributors to staff. What they do have are very smart technical people that want to figure out how they can make this applicable to their business. A good example, I was with a customer just about a month ago, and I talked about the different models of how you can make OpenStack relevant in your environment. And I referenced the model of you know, going out and finding people like, uh, like in our community that know how to, to, uh, to develop towards Cinder, or know how to develop and actually contribute code toward uh, the Glance project, and bring them on staff and build that out. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting, some set of customers will actually say, that's our model, and a lot of you probably know some of the big names that do that. A lot of the customers that are mainly more in this enterprise type market will say, I'd rather not do that. And the reason is, is really twofold. Number one, I want to support and endorse the community, let the community drive it, let that innovation happen there. But secondly, if I've got, if I've got OPEX, if I've got dollars, I want to figure out how I make my business move forward. That's, that's what I have got to do. I have limited OPEX, limited people. If I have additional OPEX, I want to figure out how, I move my peop how my people can move the business forward. And that's where they're focused on. And Steve Stover mentioned that at the Solid Fire keynote when uh, Dell was on stage with them today. This is the customer where we actually can go to them and say, we have done this. Other things that are similar to you in your IT environment, other vendors where you have certified admins, you have support behind it, we have something like that for OpenStack that Dell and Red have put together. It, it gets them very excited about OpenStack, and that's what we need to drive here. Um, let's talk about enterprise use cases. Uh, 
Bill talked about this a second. A lot of our customers at this point in 2014 are not trying to pick up OpenStack because they want to pick up OpenStack. They have problems they're trying to solve. They have new applications they're trying to deploy. They see this appending change with applications coming. They want to get started now. So they're looking at things like building out test dev environments. They're looking at things like storage as a service, which is one of the most popular use cases right now. And Kamesh, who was just doing the last session on Ceph, I mean, the people in the room, you could tell the interest level that's there. That is a very highly, uh, a, a high base of interest among our customers. Storage as a service. Um, platform as a service is another one. Um, Bill mentioned uh, content distribution. This is actually a really hot one among our telco customers where they want to start distributing uh, content, images, web, um, videos on the web. And when they look at their traditional uh, technologies that they have in their environment, it either can't scale to that level, it's not performant to that level, or it's cost prohibitive. And this is where OpenStack comes in and fits extremely nicely as long as they don't have to build it themselves from the ground up. Okay? So another thing to note there that you'll see technologies exist in an IT organization for one function that might be different from OpenStack, and they will sit. You'll see OpenStack and other technologies, my, my prediction in the next few years, you'll see those standing next to each other in a public way as well as in a private way. That will continue to happen. There are use cases where it makes sense for traditional IT to keep applications there, but the new applications that are emerging that live on the public cloud as a first place, as a first home, they're gonna need a cloud to live on on-premise, and that's really the opportunity that OpenStack has. Um, and then let's talk about the, you know, the, the risk that comes with this and the, and the enterprise experience. Obviously, Dell and Red Hat, we, we, like I said, we live in the enterprise. We, we understand how they operate. We understand what matters to them. We want to be the flag bearers from the OpenStack community to go to that group and say, here, we have got OpenStack in a way for you, minimizing the risk for them. Because a lot of, and again, this comes from experience. Uh, you know, we've been in the OpenStack business for, you know, this will be four years this year, really since day one. We have built reference architectures and solutions, and we have learned by doing over the last four years. That's one of the great things that history gives you. Being first has a lot of great accolades that come with it. Yay, we're first. The unfortunate thing is that you get to learn really raw <laughs> when there is nothing but two, you know, two piles of code munched together. You get to figure out what you need to work on very, very quickly to make it stable for a customer. So what is represented in our solution today with Red Hat is backed by history. We have had a track record of taking this to customer sites, deploying on customer sites, learning what works, learning what does not work, and coming out with a solution that we believe is going to fulfill a lot of the customer needs that are in the enterprise right now. And as a result, the risk level actually comes down. Because of the distribution that's hardened by Red Hat, and because of the reference architecture that's been validated over time, the risk level comes a lot lower for customers, and that's the threshold. That's what they need. They need that threshold lowered so they can get started, and that's really what we're, we're all about. And Enterprise Grade obviously fits right into that. Our friends over at Red Hat, we're extremely happy to be working with them, um, and we are, it's, not a, um, it's not just a thing where we just see each other at, our, uh, at, our, at these summits. Um, whether Bill likes it or not, he sees my, my face every, multiple times a week. Uh, we're on phone calls multiple times a week, meeting, every, planning. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, the line between our Don't two sound so enthusiastic. No, no, but the line between our, two, our yeah. two companies uh, working together is, yeah. is becoming almost invisible. It's just like it really an extension right. to each other's teams. In right. fact, um, there have been a couple of instances this week where we've had executives from uh, both companies meet some of our team, and we've had to say, this is Bill Mason. He works for Red Hat. This is Joseph, he works for Dell, just because it gets really, really convoluted that way. It's a great way to drive enterprise, uh, you know, enterprise grade solutions, which I should say is the expectation um, from the enterprise. They want something that is going to work, that's robust, that's supported, that's been tested, okay? Um, I won't spend too much time on this. This is uh, kind of a, uh, you know, a, a view to what we had announced. Um, as Bill said, there were two important announcements that came out about this relationship. Number one, we will be building a joint solution in market, the Dell Red Hat solution, which has now launched, it is now fully available. Um, if you or you know, your circle are interested in something like this, you can talk to a Dell person or a Red Hat person, they can do it today, you can get on the phone, start mapping this out. The second thing is a co-engineering, uh, a, co a collaborative element. So we have engineers that were just over at Red Hat last week actually, um, that are working on collaborating with specific projects. 
and where Dell and Red Hat will work together to contribute all of this back to the community. The, so everything that's gonna come out in this distribution, it's gonna be hardened and validated and supported, but anything that's new that's generated in that distribution, it 100% is gonna be going to the upstream. That and Dell is going to be a, is a participant in that today and will continue to be a participant in that uh, going forward. Okay. Now, this is, um, and, and we, we'll all spend a little bit of time on this. In the, in the same vein of trying to make it simple, um, what Dell has done we're in partnership with Red Hat is actually pull together um, three, uh, mainly two, but uh, three configurations on our, for our customers on how they want to buy. One would be a POC, and POC here means uh, uh, proof of concept. Um, I had to clarify that yesterday in yesterday's session. People didn't know what POC, and apparently there's a lot of different definitions I'm finding. Uh, point of contact was one, piece of crap was the other. But it's, uh, this is the proof of concept uh, configuration. <laughs> the proof of concept configuration. And really what this is for, it's a great first step uh, for a customer that's never done this to really get a very small stamp and get started on working on OpenStack. It's a really nice, easy way to get seamlessly into that. And we'll go into detail about what's in those bundles. Um, secondly, for the, the pilot bundle, is essentially uh, a 2x of what the POC looks like, but it's got a, a deeper, uh, a more sophisticated networking uh, area. It's actually got more around OpenStack storage um, and actually can actually host more VMs as a result. So it makes it easier for a customer that may not be at the, at the proof of concept level, maybe they're a little bit more sophisticated, and it gives them a nice, good, beefy stamp to start with. And the beauty of this is, is that as a result, you know what, I should turn that off. <laughs> Sorry about that. Although I'm sure you guys enjoyed that. Um, it actually also is a nice way to scale, right? So once you buy that pilot configuration, um, it's a nice way just to go get additional blocks of this configuration and just scale it out. One of the things that we've learned over the last few years has been there's a shift between going from something like a POC or a pilot to production scale. Traditionally, with a lot of our you know, server infrastructure, customers will do a POC on site for whatever period of time. They'll make decisions, they'll say, you know what, love it, love the POC, went well, I'm now ready to buy production scale um, system. What we found in, not just in OpenStack, but in other emerging technologies like Hadoop um, and NoSQL technologies, is that the POC evolves into the production unit now, right? So a lot of our customers will start with the proof of concept, will bring uh, workloads onto it, will tune it for their environment, make sure the right networking and you know, authentication connections, all that happens. And then once they get it comfortably, and those of you that work with OpenStack understand how important this is, once you get it to where it's tuned really well, you don't really want to tear that apart and start over again, right? You want to use it, you want to be able to build on top of it, and that's really what this pilot configuration allows you to do, is to just start building right around it. And this is something our customers have done a lot of, is start with a very base kind of a bundle, and then start building around it based on the workloads that they've got and the, and the horsepower that they need. The final one, which I won't spend too much time on, is the production scale. And the reason I won't spend too much time on it is it basically uses the, uh, the, the main form factor behind the two bundles uh, before it, but it's primarily a services engagement with Dell and with Red Hat. And the reason that is is because if anybody here has actually tried to deploy OpenStack at a large, large, massive scale, um, it's hard to do that out of a box, right? It's hard to do a 1,000 node, 2,000 node OpenStack environment out of the box, take it in, plug it in the wall, and it just works. That's just not how it works. Um, it, is, it does require a networking discussion. It does require you know, discussions around who will be accessing and what their roles will be. It'll have discussions around what the specific applications that need to run on it. And Dell and Red Hat have actually figured out a way to actually manage this with, a, with every customer, have a conversation, work out what it is, and then implement it for their environment. It's part of our DNA and it has been for a long time. So the production bundle really is around uh, a very deep, specific engagement with, uh, with every customer one-on-one -on -one and figuring out what's right for them. Okay. Uh, at a very high level, um, this is kind of what the, the bundles look like and I'll do this for all three of the configurations. Um, so first of all, uh, the, the, the proof of concept bundle, I'm really careful about saying proof of concept now, I wanna say that every time. Uh, the proof of concept bundle 
um, is actually a five node stamp uh, using our mainstream R720 server, uh, server hardware. It is, um, you know, if there are Dell customers in the room, a lot of our customers use the R720. It's a model everybody's really familiar with, a standard x86 server. We have configurations and tunings based on a reference architecture that will tune it a certain way to optimize it for OpenStack. Um, from a networking perspective, we're using our Dell Networking S55 switch, which is a one gig networking uh, 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 capability. And uh, from a distribution perspective, we have brought in uh, the Red Hat validated uh, OpenStack platform and then services that come from Dell from consulting, deployment, and support. Um, so as the customer is growing, as the customer is evolving, if there are issues that come up, um, they're able to pick up the phone rather than go on it on their own or try and reach out to a community mailing list. They can pick up the phone and dial an 800 number. They have someone on the other end who knows what they're talking about. Uh, when you break it down, the nodes, you've got uh, the first couple of nodes are kind of manager and controller nodes. Um, and in particular, um, there's a few nodes dedicated for the Nova Compute uh, modules. Now, one thing that's missing here is there's not a storage, uh, storage component separate here. Um, in this model, because it's a proof of concept, and again, this goes based on history, we were able to, uh, we, we found we've been able to give customers a very small stamp and leverage just the local disk with the com Nova compute capabilities for them to be able to just get a taste of how OpenStack works. And this is, this is proven time and time again to be adequate for kind of a first, uh, first step into the OpenStack uh, framework. Now, one thing that we are doing a little different here, a lot of our customers that are familiar with the public cloud model will be told this is the kind of uh, virtual machine uh, support you'll get. So in this particular configuration, we can support up to 90 virtual machines based on the, the specific configuration choices around memory and things like that that you, uh, that you make. Um, but that's really what this stamp looks like. Um, you know, five servers, one gig networking, uh, basic Nova compu uh, compute capabilities, um, and up to 90 virtual machines. And this is that proof of concept bundle. Now, when we go up to the, um, to the pilot configuration, again, this is, this is, there actually are some customers who use this as their first step just because they don't see the need to just learn a little bit about OpenStack. This is, they're ready to make some real commitments um, at this level and just want to start testing out applications and workloads. Um, and I'll just spend some time on what's different here versus the, um, the, the proof of concept bundle. So here you're actually getting a much bigger, uh, much bigger rack. I think it's a half rack as opposed to a quarter rack. Um, so in terms of actual nodes, I think it's an 11 node configuration versus a five node configuration. Um, one difference here is that we actually include our R720 XD capable, uh, server model. And really what that is, it's just like the R720 for familiar with that model, uh, but it had, has capability for, ex, um, for additional disks. So you can actually expand it out to have a very strong local storage footprint if that's uh, for this configuration. It is one of the options that are available to you but allows you to have a very strong local you know, uh, disk uh, capability there. Um, also in this configuration, we also up our networking to a 10 gig networking uh, configuration, uh, which we're including our um, S4810 switch from our Dell networking group, and allows you to actually take advantage of extra bandwidth. Again, with this kind of horsepower, the applications change um, and the requirements change a little bit, so we're, we bump it up to a 10 gig uh, platform there. Um, the other difference here, in addition to just you know, more ho horsepower on the actual gear, uh, we do include um, uh, sender capabilities here. Uh, and I think I saw Kamesh on the, on the last slide, on the last session that it's actually Ceph, it's a Ceph, uh, uh, it's actually Ceph nodes that are actually included in there, a part of that solution in the next release, okay. So right now it's just, it's sender capabilities with Red Hat storage. And then in the next, in the next release it will be uh, our Ceph capabilities now that, uh, now that Red Hat has acquired Ceph. And in, for context, um, a single POC bundle can have up to 228 virtual machines. But bear in mind, this is something that can scale. As you add more, um, you can, your whole cluster can actually grow as a result. Um, won't spend too much time on this. The only one thing I would say here is that PowerEdge C servers are an option as well here in this case. Um, PowerEdge C, I mentioned DCS before, the, the, the team that built out all these custom infrastructures for the biggest clouds. I can't name them, obviously, but if you think of the biggest clouds in the world, those are where our customers um, for, this, for their environment. PowerEdge C was actually a mainstream server line that came out of that. So if I talk about that for just a second, uh, when we looked at all these large-scale distributed clouds, 
we saw about 80 to 90 percent of what they wanted was about the same. Um, you know, they would come to us and want to buy several thousands of servers at a time. Um, and you know, these are companies that spend millions and billions of dollars a quarter just adding more and more power, um, uh, and uh, I should say compute power, um, to their environment. Uh, what we found out was that density mattered to them. We found out that power management mattered to them. We found out that software redundancy at the software level is what mattered to them. We found out that automation and open source mattered to them. Well, so what we started doing was realizing that with that 90% that was about the same, we could actually build a server line that actually captured all that goodness. And we would still build the custom environments for you know, the largest scale customers. But for the customers that want to get to distributed scale, that can't spend billions of dollars a quarter on gear, um, there's a model now, the PowerHC model, that can actually enable that. And it is a, uh, it is a model specifically for cloud and hyperscale solutions. Um, so that is an option when you want to build out a production configuration. When you talk to our services teams, they can use that as an option as well. Okay. Um, I think I've just got a couple of slides, and then we'll, we'll open it up for, some, for any questions. Um, let's talk services for a second. And again, let's go back to who we're talking about. Our enterprise customers, um, again, generally are not heavy in, in, in writing code for the community, are not, uh, are not regular contributors. So in addition to us providing the guidance, whatever we can on a packaged basis, they need a lot of help in terms of services. So things like consulting, things like deployment, going on site and actually deploying it. Um, uh, while they have actually, uh, once they've actually deployed it, ongoing maintenance and support, right? How do I grow it? How do I fix this problem that sprung up? Uh, I, need a, I need somebody behind me to actually pick up the phone and, and, and call somebody. Uh, and that's really what Dell and Red Hat are doing. And beyond that, this is now a, a group of people that we want to train, not just in the, in the new capabilities of OpenStack. Remember, this is a new way of doing computing now. It's a very different way of doing things. And so as that company, as these customers start evolving that way, We've already started setting up training between Dell and Red Hat and make, making that available for our customers that decide to go through this uh, model. They've got training and certification on the Red Hat components. Uh, those, those training sessions have includes uh, items around DevOps, include items about new distributed architectures. All those things exist as part of the training. This is a really good example of the things that the enterprise has come to us and looked at what we're doing, Dell and Red Hat together, and given us a big thumbs up to say this is what we have needed and this is something that uh, is really important to our portfolio. Okay, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this. Let me just say, this is not just something that's theoretical in our mind. As soon as we started uh, working on this and starting announcing this, our customers have actually come to us and have actually said, uh, yes, this and more and more and more and more. Keep it open. Keep it open as much as you can. Uh, we want to see the innovation that's happening in the community to continue. There's an interesting survey that's done every year by Black Duck Software about, about uh, sentiments toward open source. Uh, I Google it, you can find great information about it. Some interesting stats, a lot of the enterprise, and I think this last time around, 900 some enterprises participated in this survey. But a lot of these enterprises are now saying, looking at open source, not just OpenStack, but open source as a way to drive higher innovation at a faster pace than they have traditionally with proprietary options, okay? So the, the attitudes toward open source are changing. The attitudes toward collaborating are changing. So us keeping ourselves open, us keeping ourselves up to speed with the community, us partnering with the community and participating in the community, that is the model that we're trying to drive here. One interesting stat, just you know, may not really completely be related here, but it, it caught my eye. One interesting stat was 57% uh, of those, that, those respondents actually said that they expect to collaborate with their competitors to drive innovation over the next three years. That, my friends, is a, is a real shift in how our IT organizations are, are, are operating. Okay. I think this is my next to last slide, and, I'll, and then I'll be, I'll be done here. Um, very, very high-level roadmap. Uh, the V1 is really what we just announced here at the Red Hat Summit just a few weeks ago, um, really to get a solution out there. Um, in the June, late, late May, early June, July timeframe, uh, we will have a version two that'll be out focused on Ice House. And if you look at the kind of things that we're trying to focus on here, um, you'll see it's a very storage-centric type release. 
We want to make sure that those of our customers that are using our products like Equalogic that have been constantly bombarding us with help. We want to figure out how we include Equalogic and in what we're doing with OpenStack. We are, we are answering um, that call here with this release, as well as some of the new, newer technologies around Ceph. Well, uh, like you heard with the last session, it's a big part of our strategy. It has been for a long time, as well as the Red Hat storage server, uh, server that's coming out. And version three, you know, the, my team that created this said it's a secret, so I can't tell you too much. But based on the timing, you can tell, right, this is the Juno time frame. Um, there are use cases that our customers are going to be using this for. I mentioned some of those things, storage as a service, content delivery. These are the things that we're going to be focusing on to make sure that they are continued to be enabled to pick these technologies up, use them, and have the support behind them that they need to, to drive it forward. Um, let me kind of uh, end, end with this here. Hopefully you can tell that um, to Dell and to Red Hat, driving innovation is what matters. For Dell in particular, this has been a part of our DNA for a long time. What can we as a company do to drive innovation forward? Not just in this space, but in every space. How do we drive innovation? How do we empower our customers to do more than they thought they could? And OpenStack represents that. That's why we have the teams we have on OpenStack. That's why we invest in OpenStack the way we are. And really, it is the community it is the community that we are trying to drive forward because that's where innovation is coming from and we continue to do that. Um, last slide here, I promise. Last slide, if there are uh, questions or comments, if you have customers, if you have people in your circle that are looking that you know may not be at the caliber that a, a hardcore Python developer is, maybe they're not a PTL of one of the projects, but they're looking to get a toe in the water around OpenStack or if they have tried OpenStack and they've stalled, or they've tried OpenStack and it still remains to be um, you know, a little science project there, we can help. So let me just give you a few ways to kind of uh, help let us uh, get connected with the people that are out there. Websites, obviously you can learn way more about that, dell.com slash OpenStack, um, and then redhat.com slash dellcloud. We'll give you a lot of the information I shared here, case studies, and I'll say the, one of the, the first case study that we did with Red Hat is our own IT organization, okay? Our IT organization at Dell represents the kind of customer we are going after. OpEx is spent on furthering the business, not on hiring a bunch of developers to be in the community, which is a strategy, but that's not how this customer wants to do it. We have a full documented customer reference on this, on this website that you can download and read through what their problems were, how they're solving it, and how they continue to actually evolve it over time, so check that out. Um, I also want to mention the solution centers. Um, if you or your customers are interested in doing a proof of concept, you can actually do it on Dell on a Dell site with an architect that's already stood up. There are there's staff, um, there are staff, uh, there are experts on site, there's gear already stood up. You can actually schedule time and bring your workloads to those centers and they're spread out all over the world. Obviously Austin, Texas, Chicago, New York, Shanghai, Europe, they're all over the place, so take advantage of it. Finally, I'll just leave it at this. If you don't remember any of these things about how to get in touch with somebody about this, OpenStack at Dell.com will always get you to the right place. You've got architects, marketing folks, salespeople, executives looking at that inbox, making sure that customers that come in are serviced appropriately. So if you remember nothing else about how to get in touch with Dell or Red Hat on this, Drop us a line at OpenStack at Dell.com, and we'll get you out of the right way. So with that, I think we've maybe got just a, a couple of minutes. If there are any, any questions, and I'll invite Bill to come on back uh, with any questions that, that might be out there. Um, I will say a little bit that uh, you know, Red Hat has actually done a great job in helping our Dell IT team actually stand up their first OpenStack cloud in a real, you know, in a real meaningful manner. Um, and we can, we, can have, we can have some questions about that if you'd like. But, We'll open it for any questions that might be out there. Okay. Yes, question. What's the difference between a Red Hat OpenStack manager and the OpenStack controller? How are they different? Okay, OpenStack manager and the controller. Hello? Yeah. It's, it's really just the OpenStack components, right? It's, we ha there's not a separate um, code path or anything like that. We use Foreman to do the provisioning, and you have the Horizon dashboard and what, you know, the, the, te the telemetry you get from Solometer, for example. So it's not meant to imply that it's something separate or different. Red Hat OpenStack Manager, uh, we just have to take the OpenStack provisioning RPM part of that, I mean, like the format part of it, 
Yeah, that's, that, that, that bullet item refers to the form and provisioning capability, right. which we've improved in our OpenStack Platform 5, which will be commercially available in the end of June, early July. Yeah. It's a fair point. It, do, it doesn't necessarily need a separate node to run, but that's the way the configuration was defined. I don't know, Kamesh. It's if you... easier to set it up that way. Otherwise, the deployment becomes very complex. Right. So again, based on the deployments we've done in the past, <laughs> um, having something dedicated, because Foreman is not really just about deployment. It's actually deployment and upgrade, and, and there's a lot of other things that are kind of tied into that. You could put it on one of the existing nodes, but then you start taking cycles away from other things that, that it needs to run against. Any other questions? All right, I think we are actually out of time. So if you have any, feel free to come up. Thank you for your time. Thank you.